Good evening everyone, this is Coach Carol and with me tonight is Anne Mershon and Shambles Guru and we hope that others will join us for the very first e-talking session for 2013 and tonight's topic is about the book that some of us have read called Resumes Are Dead, What to Do About Them and the reason that I um, put that as our heading for tonight was some recent discussions that I've been having with several people about how we get people to have an online presence or an online profile I should say that is fitting with the 21st century style and in my mind the old paper based resume is long dead however there are still some pockets of people who still rely on that and um, I thought well there, there's other ways of doing things and one of my favourite ways of putting my work online is in my social networks and the one that I'm focusing on this year is uh, LinkedIn. I find it as a much more powerful professional space and I'm revamping some of what I would call parts of my resume in there. However, what I would like to do first is to just mention to those who might be looking on a little later into this recording of how you might get the book itself uh, written by Richard Norton. I think he likes to be called Richie. I see that in some of the discussions I've read. And it's available at a very reasonable price at Amazon as a Kindle book. And thanks to Chris or Shambles Guru, tonight I've learned how I can get that as a e an ebook into a Kindle app on my iPad. So I love it when uh, we have some new learning that just happens serendipitously. So before I um, go any further, I'll just get Chris and Anne to come back with their microphone and just tell me whether they agree with the title of the book and what they know about it and anything else you want to add. So I'll start with you, Chris. Hi, well for those that don't know me, my name's Chris Smith, Shambles Guru, and I'm here in Chiang Mai, North Thailand at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with this beautiful sun streaming streaming through the window. Um, this actually, uh, many of the schools I work with are international schools and this is a really timely discussion because all of the international schools around the world, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, and I, I think many in the south, the Southern as well, um, are putting their adverts out for jobs for September. So if you are thinking of applying for a job in an international school, this is this is this is spot on. Um, Carol, do you, want, do you want me to talk about the topic, or just say a bit about myself, or, or what, what would how would you like me to contribute now? Uh, I think just um, reiterate your knowledge of the book and what you think about the topic of the book. Okay, well, uh, I haven't read the book. That's that's one thing. So I really I can't comment about the book at all. But the topic is very relevant to do you know to do with um, your I online identity. Um, but I'm not sure whether it's what we want to do or what future employers want us to do, because I think a lot of adverts say send us your curriculum vitae, send us your CV, send us your resume and I have a feeling, I don't know what you, what you think about this, I have this this feeling that the majority of people are still doing Word documents which list uh, um, yourself and they're not listing necessarily online although I also suspect that most employers now are googling us and so that if we're we're not, if we don't have a very positive online presence, that may be a device that future employers use to shortlist you or, or not to shortlist you. How do you think about that, Carol? Is it, you know, is it our expectation well, or the employee's expectation? Well, someone who hasn't read the book, you're spot on. Because that's exactly what Richard Norton says. In the um, video that I'm about to show you, he talks about the fact that um, prospective employers are now 
harvesting their potential employees by googling their names and they use that as you say to find out what kind of people they are. So it is extremely important to have a professional online profile. So thanks for that. Uh, can I just ask Anne now, I know that Anne has said she has read the book, maybe it was some time back, but tell us a bit about what your thoughts are Anne. Hello everyone, I'm Anne Merchant from Western Victoria, Australia. We're still on school holidays. Chris, we've had the most beautiful weather today where I live, but tomorrow we're bracing ourselves for another 40 degree heat wave, or heat day I should say. Um, I have read the book and it was a time, well it was probably 12 months ago Carol, so my memory is not very good anymore. But I agree with Chris So I know in our school all our students still write written resumes. So it, as part of their career subject they will write a word document uplifting um, you know, as much as they can about themselves there. But like Chris says, I'm sure prospective employers Google those students to see exactly what their online presence is. I know that um, I've been involved on a few conference committees and if we want a guest speaker or a keynote speaker, uh, we just Google them and we want to know what they look like, what they're actually doing, do they have any videos about you know, their thoughts, their ideas, their experiences, uh, what is their blog, what does that look like, how much does that tell us about it. And if they don't have an online presence, we're very reluctant to actually invite them either to be part of the conference or the keynote, especially when it's technologically based. So I don't think resumes or the written form, that's how I interpret that, is dead yet. Uh, but I'm sure it is dying and it will continue to die increasingly as technology you know, takes on even more impact. Thanks Anne. Uh, yeah, my thoughts too uh, are around that, that there are many people who are still using the traditional resume format. Uh, but with the change that's coming, and believe me, it will come very swiftly as we know, um, what to do about it is really an important skill that we need to add to our kit. So I thought first of all I might just get you to listen to this little video, and so I've got that on web tour right now. And I will just plug in the, the site, okay, where is it gone? There it is. <laughs> and this is of course a YouTube and you should be able to view it yourselves and you should be able to hear it quite well so I'll stop talking. Alright, so now we're going to talk about personal branding online. When employers are looking for job you know, applicants, when they're looking at all the different resumes that come in and whatnot, what's the first thing that Okay, thanks Anne for putting the link in there too. I have intended to do that, that you uh, did that for me. Uh, so the, the fellow on the left is Richard Norton, the author of the book. And there is a series of those little video snippets that you can find on YouTube if you want to go any deeper than that. And I thought I would just start with that one because he, um, he points out a few of the things that um, his interviewee had recommended. I can't remember now what company he was from, he's definitely the CEO. And these were some of the top tips that I heard him say in that video about how to establish your online branding, he was calling it, or our online profile. And so I thought, well, let's make a start with other things that we think is necessary to do uh, as we go into this topic, because it's really not just the resume that we're talking about now. And the reason behind why we write a resume that really is driving us forward in this particular way. So when I'm wanting to ensure that someone knows what projects that I've done, what skills I've developed, it's now going onto LinkedIn. That's where I will be showcasing my online profile. So the, the five things that came out of the, the video was to set up the accounts and I'm just crossing out this book for the moment. <laughs> I do have an account there. I definitely have Twitter and I use that lightly. 
but I'm definitely focusing in on LinkedIn this year. And it does have my Coach Carol name, so I was happy about that. And I've since gone ahead and done a few more social site searches for me within LinkedIn and found a number of uh, conversations that have been happening recently that I have participated in and it suits me fine. Uh, so the advice is to get accounts at those specific networks of like-minded people that you connect with, like our Australia E-Series, and connect with those who are relevant to your work. So I just wanted to ask again what advice you would give and what can we add to the board? Would you like to add it yourself or come back to the microphone and I'll paraphrase it for you? So um, let's start with you, Anne, this time. Uh, I would like to add that I think a brand also includes a personal site. Uh, so I think that it's essential to have a blog or a wiki or a, a link that you, people can go to because before I network with people, I like to know a little bit more about them. So I will be searching for their um, presence online, e.g. a blog. I can read more about them, see what they're thinking, what they're doing. Um, how they're sharing with others, etc. Um, and I might let go back to you, Carol, because I might put a few more notes on the board as I think about them. Yeah, that's a good start. Thanks, Anne. Okay, let's swing over to you, Chris, and tell us what you have in mind. Okay. Now, I, it's, it's interesting. I, I went through this decision many, many years ago on whether to use my real name or to actually use the word branding. I've never, I never thought about using the word branding before, which is a good term, or whether to brand myself. Now, I, I have a problem that my real name is Chris Smith, and if you do a, a, a search anywhere for Chris Smith, there's dozens, hundreds of us, thousands of us. So if you have a common name, the odds are that you're either not going to come out at all, or you're going to be lost in 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 the in the group that comes up in the search. So the perspective perspective employer is just not going to find you, or wonder why you're you know, the Chris Smith. There is a Chris Smith who's a member of Parliament in the UK, and another one who's a photographer, the Times newspaper. Um, now I could pretend they were all me, but they're not. So that's what made me de determine to have a brand, a pseudonym, and that's why I use the name Shambles Guru, because I started off with a website called shambles.net, and I can't remember the day where it happened, but I suddenly took on the name Shambles Guru, and that's unique. So maybe a question that, as a teacher, we should, uh, an ed educator we should ask is, as an online presence, do you want to have a, a brand name? If, now, if you notice in lots of teachers' blogs, they, they, they use a pseudonym, they use a name. Um, they don't necessarily go with their real name. Actually, before I go any further, Carol and Anne, what do you think about that? that see, Carol, you, 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 you market yourself as Coach Carol, which is the branding. Anne, what, what, what do you market yourself as a particular, with a particular name? Well, my most common online username is Nurture because people cannot spell Merchant very easily. <laughs> uh, so I, but I think if I did have my choice again, I would choose my real name because that really is who I am. And there aren't many Anne Merchants in the world, although there have been a couple trying to friend me on Facebook. But I agree. I think uniqueness, um, the ability for people to be able to find you and actually knew you and not a thousand others with the same name is really important too. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, interesting and that. It's that you mentioned that um, thinking about names and the, the reason that I use Coach Carol is twofold. One, my surname McCulloch is often misspelled and <laughs> uh, I'm now marketing myself under the name of Coach Carol because that's what I was called in some projects about five, six years ago now. And people began to call me that. And so I now wrap my entire branding around it. And I found out 
recently when I googled the term Coach Carol that there is very few and they're mostly American. <laughs> so it's an interesting uh, thing that we, we need for our own online presence and the word branding is obviously um, something that's resonating for you, Chris. But I think you wanted to go on and, and say a little more. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, uh, can I just turn that a little bit? <laughs> when I hear Coach Carol, actually, Carol, when I, when I hear Coach Carol, I have a mental image of a red bus. I don't know why I have a mental image of a red bus. With Coach, of course, buses are called coaches in, are they called coaches in, in Australia as well? Um, we, we call them coaches if we're going on tour. <laughs> uh, if, if you're going to away to the seaside for a weekend, okay. You should have a, well, that's another one, is, is whether you just brand your name or whether you have a logo. Now, I'm actually looking at this. If you look at my the note logo next to my name here, I actually don't use my real photograph. Now, this is quite, I, I use uh, an image of my avatar out of Second Life. Um, and that tends to be the visual branding, the visual image that glues all of my different personal learning networks and, and digital footprint elements. It brings them all together. Uh, and that's another interesting one uh, because there are two, two uh, opposing views on this, on whether in all of your publicity, in all of your digital footprint, do you use your real picture or do you use uh, some sort of icon or logo that brands you? Um, and I'll only add to that before I ask the two of you what your thoughts are, is that, of course, if we're working with kids, then for online safety, quite often, if I'm, I don't work with student, with young students so much now, I, I'm tending to work with adults most of the time, but, but if you're working with students, it's probably a good idea for them to, for online uh, safety uh, and privacy issues, for the children to have uh, an icon of some sort or uh, uh, an avatar of some sort. And there, and there's so many websites now that, that will make these little fun icons for you. Now I notice Anne and, and Coach Carol. I, I'm sorry, I had the bus in my head. Uh, Anne, uh, Anne and Carol, what about that? You're using your real photographs, have, have you ever thought about using something else instead as the image that's there next to your name? Uh, can I respond to that first? Chris, I did think about it and when I first started online there was a lot of talk about <laughs> cyber safety and all the problems that you could face, etc. But I've always used my photograph and I'm happy that I have uh, because Several times people have actually recognised me at either conferences or at an airport and come up and said hello and they've become a very, very strong feature in my network now. With students though, my students with their blogs etc all have computer generated IDs or avatars because of that safety aspect in education with younger students. But by the time they get to the senior uh, years of school, I probably think it's not still, uh, it's probably frowned upon by education department, but they like to use their photo and I do too because they are now at the stage where they'll be looking for work, scholarships and other sort of, you know, online networking as well. So I don't know what others think about that. Yes, I hear what you say loud and clear Anne, and I agree that sometimes we need to have an avatar that we can use where it's appropriate. And I've put on the white, what I hope you see it now, is just a little uh, photo image that I took only last November where I had um, created a, a conference and we were learning how to use parts of the iPad and we were asked to take a photo that was meaningful for us. And, and I don't know why, but it just struck me. I had my cards out and of course we were munching on the sweets on the tables and I just stuck the card in there and took the picture and now I use that as an avatar image. You can't quite read the writing on the business card so I'm going to work a little bit more on that so that is more visible and I thought it, sometimes that needs to be done um, like you say Anne where we don't want people to recognise us by our face. 
uh, but I'm sure now that anyone in the world would recognise yourself and myself from our online presence. But um, thank you for taking the time to think that through and, and to add it. I think these are all relevant points. And I was just going to move on now to um, uh, talk a little bit more about how we can create a little more of our online presence in LinkedIn. If it's not your favourite, uh, never mind. You might learn something along the way. I'm hoping you do. And what I'd like to, to give you just to, to move to a little bit of um, formal presentation, if you like, is to show you some of my research that I did in finding out a little bit more about what people thought about LinkedIn. And uh, the link for this article is live on the whiteboard. If you wanted to go to it, you can certainly click there. I like the name of this particular report coming from the Kick-Ass social media. And it really resonated for me when it spoke about entrepreneurs, business people and professionals saying that it was the best social media platform. And uh, when you read into it deeply, it certainly is about marketing. It's marketing yourselves. And so I thought you might like to visit that one to, to read even more. And it looks like uh, Chris has shared another one with us as well. Thanks for that. And I have another one for you, which was from the Mashable.com site where they'd even done a little bit of a um, research on this and the way in which uh, this person, Jared Hall, is describing the use of LinkedIn um, is saying that people think that their LinkedIn profiles and their re resumes are interchangeable, but they're not. So he was getting us to think a little bit deeper about what goes into your resume and what you might put into your LinkedIn. And he goes on to say that there's certainly a lot in common, but there are some things that should not appear in your resume. So that link too is um, live for you on the whiteboard. And one more, just to uh, further emphasise the, the notion that's coming through loud and clear to me, uh, that LinkedIn is coming essential. And if nearly 60% of them say it's the most important social network account, then I'm going to listen to that. You know, if that survey of nearly 3,000 networkers said that, then that's an important issue for me. Most of these are coming through from international spaces. We haven't done any uh, real uh, surveying here in Australia amongst our educators and networkers that I know of. And perhaps that's something that needs to be done. And so with that, I thought I'll just pause and see if you've got others that you want to share. Thanks, uh, Shambles, for putting all of that in place. That's lovely. And I then wanted to uh, move on and just check what we might have in our own profile. And I've got a little exercise for you. But I'll pause again and see if there's anything that came out of that that you wanted to comment on. I hope I haven't um, stemmed the flow of conversation. <laughs> we do want it to be uh, free fall. Um, so feel free to just jump on the microphone if you want to say anything. And what I had next was uh, a little bit of me saying, well, this is what I did recently and it was worthwhile and I think you might also find it useful. Um, the word skill set is highlighted on that particular piece of text that I took from the LinkedIn profile challenge. I don't know if I saw it recently, but it was last week and it was a five day LinkedIn challenge put out by the LinkedIn people on a course getting you to use more of their tool the way they saw it relevant. And the, the term skill set really resonated for me. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I'm marketing. So I'm going to have a go at this and see if it makes any difference at all and just keep my eye on it over the next couple of months. So I'll read all that for yourself. Uh, so that it was just a set of profile tasks that we did. So I'll just pause and say, do you both have a LinkedIn account? Can I talk, Anne? Should I go first? Yeah, do that. I think Anne might 
be having some audio problems. I see some red, and you actually oh, may not Yeah, I can see the red there, too. Um, I, I, first of all, Carol, can I ask, do you have a, are you using a free LinkedIn account, or are you using a paid account? I'm only using a free account at the moment, and I'm really tempted to get the pro uh, and to pay a little bit more for it. Why do you ask? Oh, no, it's the same question I'm asking myself: is whether I would uh, I would pay for it? Because I think the main benefit of paying uh, for the for an account in LinkedIn is that it gives you access to email addresses of other people in LinkedIn, uh, who, you know, if, if you don't pay for it then you can still contact them through IM, I think, within LinkedIn itself, but you don't get access to emails and, and details from other people. And I'm not sure whether or not actually having the, the premium account affects what is displayed about you publicly. I have a feeling the answer is no, it doesn't. But, uh, but, but that's certainly a question to, to ask and investigate a bit more. I must Google that. What's the, you know, what's the benefits of paying for LinkedIn? Um, and uh, you asked, do I use LinkedIn? Well, the answer is I, I, I do. It's part of my personal learning network, but so is 20 other social networks, so I probably more than that. But I cheat. What I do is my first social network is Twitter. Um, that's the first place I tend to post things. But I set Twitter up so that whenever I tweet, the, the tweets automatically go to LinkedIn. And at the same time, they automatically go to Facebook, my Facebook account. So it looks like I'm very busy in LinkedIn, and it looks like I'm very busy in Facebook, but I'm really very busy in, in, in Twitter. And the downside of that is that at the moment, it's not easy to set it up to... <laughs> I, uh, sorry, I'm reading what you just said, Carol, I, I, in, in chat. I, uh, the only downside at the moment is it, it's not easy to auto tweet into Google Plus and I actually feel Google Plus is is still the sort of the the yet to come it's the horse at the back at the moment but I think it's going to it's going to gather uh, a lot of momentum in in future years um, but there's no API there's no way to automatically get from somewhere else into uh, Google Plus, and that's a real hassle, having to go and actually repeat what I'm doing in Google Plus. Um, but but maybe they'll change that sometime. Um, but I do use LinkedIn. I think the changes are really on the horizon for that one, Chris. And it's uh, great that you brought that point up, because uh, Google Plus is certainly. I I use the word peaking today. In another session, I was with um, some really high end users and they said, no, I think it's still be building. I don't think it's peaked yet. And the person that I was talking to is actually working on an API um, so that it can aggregate into all of those places, including Google+. So he would be an interesting one to follow in LinkedIn. His name is Leo Gaggle. I'll put the name in for you. And uh, if we've got an account, we might just uh, share the link to it in the text chat there. But I wanted to give Anne a chance to come back and try her mic again. Yeah, hello, Carol. I think it's working now. Um, I had, I've just got bandwidth connections, and now we've got visitors, so I may have to depart, unfortunately. I love this conversation, though. Um, and so, I th sorry, Carol, I will have to go, but I shall mark myself away. And if you're still in progress when I'm, uh, you know, in a few, if, when I can return, I will come back. I'm sorry about that. No, that's perfectly all right, Anne. You, you do that. Um, yeah, look, um, getting back to who to follow on LinkedIn, I think he would be a good one. And he's certainly active in what we call the e-learning con conversations group in LinkedIn right now and you might enjoy that one, both of you, uh, specifically you too, Chris. So anyway, what I, I thought I would do is just tell you a bit about the challenge and, and what effect that had in doing this little exercise and I thought, well, I'll, I'll flick to the 
the last slide where I followed through on this little activity and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll show you what the activity was. Uh, the task was to write down your preferred skill set in any kind of order and then to just um, highlight those that you wanted to be best known for in your LinkedIn environment. So as you can see for me the three that stood out was instructional design, e-learning and Moodle expert. And I did this exercise and found that the person, you may know him, Chris Pappas, he has been endorsed for his instructional design by 324 people and over 500 for his e-learning. So I thought, oh, okay, so he's certainly one to follow. So I'll come back and I'll show you the exercise itself. So this is the instruction that came through on day one of the <coughs> of the challenge. And you know, you could spend a few minutes on this and go to town on it, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Um, so the thought being that you list the taught sort of skills that you wanted to be known for and to market yourself with. And they could include anything at all. And then you looked at your list and decided which key word, one thing or phrase, that's most relevant to you as a professional and go with that one for the rest of the exercise. So I used the phrase um, <coughs> instructional design in the exercise that I then pursued. And the second part of it was to perform a people search using your chosen keyword. And it then comes up with a list of the people for whom that keyword was part of their skill set. And you could then see the sort of uh, rankings or number of times have been recommended for that particular skill. And so you then chose the first person in that list and you went to have a deeper look at um, what he or she had in their, their results. And for me it was the number because at the time I think I had maybe 23 recommendations for instructional design and for me that's my major um, skill set. So um, the note that they said was that you need to make sure that your keywords are relevant and that they add to the quality of the information in your profile and it can skew things if you have some sort of weird keyword there so you might give it two or three goes to, to get the results that you're looking for. And so this was the sort of uh, result that I got when I looked up the results for Chris Pappas. As you can see right at the top here, um, his most endorsed skills was for the e-learning and then it's now 333 for his instructional design from a much larger network of followers, I might say. So it's, not, it's likely to be larger. When I did it for myself, this was the result and this is today's result. So a week ago I only had 23 or 25, I'm sure, around about that number, who had endorsed me for instructional design. And so already I've had a few more. And I felt, well, okay, well that's interesting. Um, and I have a, a smaller network as you can see. Um, so the next step was to really update the, your profile with meaningful instances of your keyword. So I'm going to do it again because the second on my list, well actually third, was Moodle Expert and this for me has become quite large in terms of the amount of time I spend on projects is my work with Moodle. So I'm going to do it again for Moodle and see what uh, results I can get and hopefully smile smugly to myself <laughs> when I get higher up on the list again. So I'm not sure if you want to have a go at, at such a skill set in your LinkedIn profile, but um, I found it an interesting one to do. So any thoughts on, on that, please, Chris? Yeah, and any exercise like this which helps you or others to reflect on what we're doing and almost doing a personal audit of, of, of where you're at, it can't be bad. It's, uh, 
Uh, quite often though the teachers aren't given the time to do it, but if they were given the time to do it, uh, then it's, it's brilliant to reflect on what you're doing. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about staying in, focusing on LinkedIn, because there are tools which will do some similar types of uh, aggregation across different social networks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always a bit nervous about putting my eggs in one basket. Do you, how, do, you, do you think you're staying like this, or are you more tempted to sort of do the same sort of exercise across more, more? Because if your employer, if, if think of going for a job, if your employer is not sort of switched on to LinkedIn, then you're really stuffed, aren't you? Because you're not, they're not going to see this. How? Yeah, that's true. Um, no, I don't intend to have it as my only place that I frequent. Um, Google Plus will certainly learn a lot more for me. I remain in Facebook and will do so as I will in Twitter. And I use those for different purposes. I'm not seeking another job. I may seek other projects. And this will probably help cement some of the reasons why someone might choose me for a project. Uh, so that's my goal. But as you can see from this one, um, at the time I did it on January the 9th, so I had only 23 who were giving me instructional design recommendations, so it, it, it more than doubled. So I thought it was a well worth uh, well sort of exercise, and because the tools in LinkedIn allowed you to do it in a, a structured kind of way, it really resonated for me, and it was quick and easy to do, and I only spent five to ten minutes each day over the week, and it was done. I'll just um, all right, I'll just pause on that one um, and see uh, what else we might want to discuss about is the resume itself dead and buried and how we might in fact encourage people to to explore more of the options for putting resumes and their profiles online. So I'd be interested to know you know, over the years, Chris, when you've um, been developing your sites, how many places would you actually be spread across? Which ones are your most frequented by others and yourself? If you could see me now, if we had audio, you'd see this big smile on my face. Um, whatever we discuss now, the, the guarantee is it doesn't happen quickly. Uh, it builds up over the, over the years. In fact, it probably builds up over people's careers. So it's not a sort of a, you press the switch and it happens. Although some teachers do, some people do ask me for that. Like, I want to get a presence online. I have nothing. So I'll say, okay, um, go to a website like um, about.me. So http colon slash slash a-B-O-U-T dot me, about dot me, and spend half an hour filling it in. And it'll, you put your name up there or your, or your, or your branded identity, whatever you want. Uh, it takes very little time to do it. And you can go back and add things later, and you can link to other areas on there. And it's free. Um, have you used uh, About Me, Carol? Yes, I have dabbled in it, thanks Chris, and I'm just realising now that you've mentioned it again, now that's a nice, simple way to get started. So please continue. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's brilliant. It, 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 is, it is really very good to do that. Actually, if I can, can I share my browser? Uh, I don't have admin, so I don't think I can share my browser, can I? You do now. Go. go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, no, that was the web tool, no. the middle one. Yeah, I want application That's sharing. It. Here we go. Google Chrome. Share. Uh, new sharing application. Google Chrome. Never show again. Okay. So can you see my browser now? Yes, I can see it coming into view now. Okay, so I have uh, one place where... Oh, there's so many things here, but... Uh, I subscribe to the suck it and see principle with everything to do with teaching and learning. Try it, don't just discuss it. So a lot of these things I try and some of them fall by the way side and some of them don't. I have uh, a website called shambles.net, http colon 
slash slash shambles there we go shambles.net that in itself is a tool for me um, if uh, you're a teacher and you don't have a website it's worth thinking about having one um, not to make it happen in, in one day or one week or one month or one year but something you slowly add what you're doing to with with students and if if you're uncomfortable with setting up a, a full website then try try one of the blogging platforms um, yet yeah, WordPress is brilliant it's uh, and there are, there's some free options as well um, find somewhere where you can blog uh, blogging has been around for a long time now and you can share what you're doing um, if you if you want a, bl a blog for the family holiday set up a separate blog but uh, blo I, you know I'm a fan of blogger which is owned by Google so use Google blogging and they've they've brought their blogging platform into the 21st century now, 22nd century now um, and uh, it, it's very good and blog there about classroom practice blog there because you know I'm, I'm in a situation now where I'm working with teachers and I'm not in the classroom all the time I think if you're a teacher you forget how powerful it is and how valuable your your views are on what happens between you and your kids um, it's 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 amazing stuff and if you're going for a new job again um, and people see that you are blogging once a week maybe about what you're doing with your kids then that is so powerful uh, for part of your online identity and, and also it reminds us all that why we're doing all this is because of the kids um, so if you're doing a blog and it doesn't mention kids and learning and teaching it's not going to have as much impact as, as otherwise but one of the things I've set up is uh, let me type in continue typing this in shambles shambles guru bio now shambles guru bio actually forwards me to somewhere else if you watch this if you notice it's taken me to Evernote now Evernote is a really good place to build up a an online uh, bio or CV, quick invitee or resume, whatever we want to call it, and and this is mine. And the advantage of it, it's in Evernote. And Evernote is, uh, if you don't know what Evernote is, and I know it's been there are some earlier uh, webinars in the OS series uh, about Evernote. Evernote, if you're a teacher and it's not in your productivity toolkit, do it. It's free. Uh, there is a premium version, but the free version is good enough. So in Evernote, which is on every one of my machines, including my iPhone, my iPad, my laptop, my desktop, um, I have a, a, a this um, uh, this this bio. <laughs> but it's strange because every now and again I think of something and throw it on here. So it's actually become quite a mess. Now I wonder if I was applying for a job and a, a prospective employer were looking at this. What would they really think? Let me scroll down so you can see. Now, at the beginning, it looks pretty good, and there's lots of links here. Um, and I, I'm picking things which I think would uh, would uh, would be effective on people. Like I was a TEDx speaker uh, a couple of years ago, so that's it there. <laughs> but it starts to get very messy as I go down here. And I do, Carol, what you mentioned. I, every year I try to pick up keywords, and last year it was communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. This year, I'm not sure. It might be mm, self-directed learning, uh, which seems to be very big now. Um, but you know, it's by contact details. Some people ask for a shorter bio. There's a 100-word bio here. Um, now, I'm walking the walk. I'm talking the talk. There's a QR code which goes, I think, back to this site, but it's sh demonstrating some technical knowledge I have. Now, here's a good question is as a teacher do we need an old-fashioned name card or old-fashioned paper name cards dead well I actually do have some old-fashioned paper name cards but what I do is I in fact I have several versions of name cards uh, which is all, all, all part of this resume thing and I just thrown them in here and you can see what they are so and the back of one name card has part of, of the social networks I belong to like YouTube YouTube is a social network. Hopefully, YouTube is part of your. Wow, I'm on a soapbox here, Carol. I'm sorry, you've got me on a soapbox. I'm ranting. Um, 
But YouTube is uh, a really good social network. So if you didn't mention YouTube, you're missing out on a, on a big uh, aspect of, of, of your resume. If you've got some videos, especially if you've got videos with kids and classroom, past, uh, classroom practice or you're, you're showing pedagogy or, or classroom management in some way, that's what employers and head teachers, senior managers, they're going to love that. First of all, you're demonstrating that you, you, you're, you're comfortable with the medium, uh, uh, but you're also the content. So it's not just the message, it's the, it's the medium as well. Um, actually, something I, I haven't mentioned here. Have I put it in here? I'm just looking, see if I've got Skype here. I think Skype, my Skype name is on the front of my name card. Here it is. My Skype name's there. See, Skype is a, is a valu valuable resume item to have down there. What, what's your Skype name? Because in international schools, certainly what they're doing is more and more they're Skyping the shortlisted teachers. Because not only is that giving them an, an, an option to, to interview you for cheap, they're not going to have to fly you to London, or they're not going to have to fly to London or Sydney or wherever they're doing the interviews. Um, they, they can do it do it on the cheap. Uh, but Skype, it's important to have it there in your resume and it's important to be comfortable using Skype. Uh, and more and more teachers now are Skyping kids into their classrooms and that's that's absolutely brilliant. I try and do that in all my workshops now. Skype somebody into the, the workshop from outside that has expertise or experiences that none of us have in the room. Um, but if you had a New Year's resolution and you're not comfortable with Skype and you still have room for a New Year's resolution, put down, get comfortable with Skype because your kids will benefit in the classroom, but for, for career development it also will. Let me just finish on this page because I'm ranting on a bit. These are just different versions of my name card. I have three different versions. There's that on the back. See, here's a version of my name card which has uh, a QR code. I'm demonstrating a knowledge of, you know, I'm comfortable with that medium. I did something which I was thinking about when you were talking about identifying your uh, your keywords for LinkedIn, which I, I think it's a wonderful reflection. I, I did that when I was making these name cards. And on one version of the name cards, you can see here, I, I brainstormed with myself. Well, that's a bit sad when you brainstorm with yourself. Um, I brainstormed with myself and came up with these. And I thought, oh, I'll do a Wordle. I see I cheated. I did it in... Photoshop, I didn't, didn't do it in one of the Wordle tools, um, but I've got that as well. Um, <laughs> what is interesting here, I've actually put a Creative Commons sign in my in in my in this particular bio. Again, I'm illustrating that I understand what Creative Commons is all about, um, but I'm also telling people they can do what they like. But you see, it's getting messy. Now, I'm not sure whether messy is part of the new paradigm. You know, you get away from that wonderfully laid out A4. Word document for your resume, or whether the new paradigm is resumes are messy. Am I being devil's advocate here? I wonder. But look, it gets starts to get really messy. I've got some pictures here. Um, <laughs> um, a few pictures. Uh, this is part of my identity, showing my avatar in there. And I start to throw a few things in here, which. I'm not sure why I've thrown them in there, except I know if I was in the interview, whether it's Skype or face-to-face, -face, these would be things which might start somebody asking me questions about, well, why have you done that there? I even have it, this particular bit of graphics here is the backdrop on all of my screens, which reminds me about my social networks. But I do, I think that gets even more messy. Oh, here's my personal learning network. Again, it's showing I know the concept about personal learning networks. Uh, I remember three years ago sitting down and doing this and locking myself away for two days. There's a whole page about that. Um, let me scroll down here quickly. Um, there's me at TED. So there's a picture of me for real. There's a <laughs> these are pictures of me taken with the Lego app in uh, the iPhone or the iPad. Again, it sh would, if it was at an interview, it would prompt some questions about what are these photos about? And then I could end up talking about mobile devices uh, and apps and mobile learning. Oh, there's a lot of those. I should take some off, actually. It's, uh, oh, that's a bit too much. That's too messy. And, and there's a real picture. 
So I do actually put a real picture of myself in uh, as well. Uh, but not, not many. So you see, this has really got quite, even my desk there, you know, it looks a really messy desk, uh, which is regularly visited by one of the seven cats that we have. And some of these, these are graphics that I use on my Facebook account. Uh, and a few other things I throw in here. And then the thing with this particular bio is when something comes up, when I remember, you don't remember, do you? Sometimes it's so at 9 o'clock at night or something, you think, oh, I should put that in my bio. I open up any machine and throw it into here. It's in Evernote, remember. Carol, what do you think about that? Do you think bios uh, and CVs and resumes, resumes are going to get more messy? Or are they just going to be the old type of resume, but under glass? Oh, thank you, Chris. That was really, really a great rant. I enjoyed listening to you. And my answer to your question is that they need to be messy. Messy is what it's all about right now. That part of it scares some people away because if someone was looking over my shoulder right now and looking at all this, they'd say, what? What? I know you quite, I thought, well, um, but I've learned even more about your journey and how you you came to be who you are through what you've just shown me. And I think that it has to take shape over a period of time. And I love the way in which you can update things into Evernote. And I wouldn't uh, worry about it being messy unless you particularly needed it to be shaped up a little differently. It might worry me though. I would definitely want to shape up if I had something like that. But what it triggered in my brain was, that's what I find I'm doing all the time. I have to keep going over to where I've stored my little bios that I use. If I just put in Evernote, I could grab it anywhere at any time. So actually, I'm just going to take us back, if you wouldn't mind, just releasing the shared application for a moment. And uh, I'll take us back to one of the slides where we were putting in our ideas about what we might um, include in helping people shape up their professional online profile. I can just stop the sharing if you like, Chris, it's easier that way. And bring us back and take us to the blank page where we started to do some stuff. And I took note of what you said in the text chat and I'm now going to see if it'll work here, paste it here. Did that work? Didn't seem to work. Bother. Okay, let me just try that again. Copy it from there. Paste it over there. Why is that working? Ah, oh, botheration. But the um, the pieces that I took out of it were these. And you're quite right. I agree with you that it's important to get comfortable with Skype or something similar so that you can use a very simple tool to be connected with others and draw people in at any time. Skype would have to be my second most used online connection space after Blackboard Collaborate. And I agree with you that messy definitely is part of the new paradigm. And for those of us who've been putting our profile online for some time now, it generally does get messy. And I think it's okay. I I wouldn't worry that it's becoming messy because, you know, it shows that there's been a lot of things happening. And if we look at what's coming up, one of the things that I was um, saying in response to you uh, in the sorts of things that you might be blogging about, I think that for this year, definitely self-directed learning, definitely MOOCs. Uh, I'm actually wanting to explore and I'm um, working with another group of people how we can use a Moodle Mahara installation for a MOOC. But I'm really wanting to expand the use and the understanding of MOOCs, not just the way in which uh, some of the Americans are using it. They use it to describe the massive open online course. I want to use it as a massive open online community. Uh, the other thing to keep your eye out for is the wearable devices. There'll be a lot more of that. So I agree with you in the terms of blogging. 
and only today I set up a class blog in EduBlogs for another project that I'm working with so that I could influence some of the big kids that I deal with, the adult learners in the Learn Locals. And so I thank you very much for your contribution tonight, Chris. That was really awesome. So given that I've just hey, tied myself I, out, Carol, I better can I, can jump I, can down I, to the last pages here. Okay. and just let everyone know what's coming up. So I'll leave that on the screen for a second or two and just see if you want to come back and say some more. And uh, I'm not sure if Anne has been able to come back. No, she's left the room. So Chris, back to you just for a last comment. Um, yeah, yeah, you said <laughs> this is like a peek into the Shambles Guru brain. I suppose it was. That was interesting. So it wasn't planned. So uh, now I, can I possibly share a couple of other sites of links to, it'll only be 60 seconds, um, sites to pages where there's more information that people can go to after the webinar. Can I just, can I share again the, the browser and do that? Yes, absolutely, go ahead. Okay, let me switch that back on. Share. Actually doing a webinar with absolutely zero preparation is uh, it's not bad, is it? It's okay, right. Now, I've got a load of things along the top here. Let me just check what I've got. So this is in... in uh, yeah, I agree with you, Chris. It's absolutely uh, no liberating. Um, if you're looking for more of those, I don't know if the early morning time slot would suit you, but uh, on Friday is when Jo Hart does her... Uh, what does she call it? The word's going to... A serendipity session. That's exactly what they are. Right. And that's on Friday mornings at 11. Well, that's a good time for me because that's uh, early afternoon in Thailand, so that's a good time. Okay, I'll go through these quickly and uh, I'll drop them into chat as well so that uh, so that they can be picked up there by the audience. This is like having a sort of uh, a, com uh, a chat with you over coffee in the staff room, isn't it? It's the two of us and then people may be watching this for years to come. Our grandchildren may be watching this in 50 years' time. There's a whole site here, a whole list here about uh, uh, resume or CVs, curriculum writers, where you can go online and you can make them. A number of sites where you can just go there and make them. Most, many of them are free. Also, there's some uh, uh, comments here about um, um, visual portfolios. And we haven't touched on portfolios at all. I think portfolios are very powerful C uh, resume tools. So that's that one. What else have we got here? I haven't got something that I shouldn't be showing. Oh, here's another one uh, to do with online identity. Um, I like that phrase, quantified self. Um, and there's lots of things here about um, well, st what happens if somebody tries to pinch your identity? Because you may spend all this time doing this wonderful online identity and then somebody tries to pinch it and you can't get in and change it. But I'm not going to go through those. I'm just going to leave it there for you to look at. These are a list of social aggregators. In other words, you were talking about doing that audit in LinkedIn. You could do a similar audit across different social networks using some of these tools here. What else have I got here? Oh, this is my personal learning network, which is a bit like, which is, I, I touched on that, but there's a lot more down here. But I'm not going to spend time there. I think that might be it. That's, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I'm not going to show any more. That's because I said I'd be quick. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay. Yeah, we were at the top of the hour, so we will need to finish. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming then that all of those could be found by us going to shambles.net and uh, looking into uh, C. Smith Personal Learning Network. Yeah, thank you. We're going to put that into the text chat for us. That would be good. So on a Mac, it, it, it's interesting to see the way it looks for you because if I do that in my PC, I can simply click it to add the link into the text chat. I don't see it on your Mac to be able to do it. Interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for um, staying the course and having this wonderful conversation with me uh, over virtual coffee. And I'm sure those who, who may come back to listen in later will enjoy it too. So I'll just um, stop the sharing again for you because it's beginning to... Uh, I shudder a little bit there and uh, bring us right back to the slides. And uh, if you're interested in the serendipity sessions, uh, they are alternate Fridays. So uh, this week it's on 
um, the, the following one on the Friday will have a definite uh, topic, a fine focused one. And then in eTalking next week, uh, Wednesday night, we've got Chris Fetcher coming in to do some uh, stuff with us on the Google tools, especially Google Plus. And then I would like to introduce my new project called Nahoodle for MOOC an unexpected journey on the 30th of Wednesday. So stay tuned for those and um, I'll finish up with my final thank you slide and uh, welcome you to come back and share some time with us. You need talking again and uh, thanks to the use of our page and our site from Steve Hargaden. So with that I'll stop the recording. Cheers.